something I've been wanting to do on this channel uh, for a while is I've been on this reading frenzy over the last three years and trying to get a better understanding of, I don't know, manhood or masculinity, whatever. Because as you know, over 10 years of running my gym, I look back and over 20 years doing jujitsu, you know, I've noticed a, an, a series of inconsistencies, meaning like a very small percentage of people actually did the work, right? Very few people came in, did the work, um, got stronger, lost the weight, whatever. And, very, and then a huge overwhelming majority didn't. And I was like, well, why is that? Well, as I look back, you know, I think it has nothing to do with the tactical pieces, the exercising and the eating and the whatever, like that's not the issue. There was a, there are deeper issues deep down emotional wounds, who knows? And so I've been kind of taking this again, deep dive into some of this psych psychology of some of this stuff and just trying to get a better understanding of why people do or don't take action on things. And some things I've discovered is, you know, based, you know, it usually starts with like an experience, right? Some kind of uh, life experience that we have. And then based on that life experience, we tell ourselves a story. And then based on that story, we create belief patterns, belief systems, or worldviews. And then based on that worldview, we, we take or don't take specific actions, right? <clears throat> and so... Like I said, I've been trying to, uh, something that's been on my mind for a while and taking and sharing a lot of the, um, I don't know, a lot of the messages that I've extracted from a lot of the books and I guess, you know, I dare, dare I call it research um, that I've been doing and just sharing that information with you. Hopefully it will improve your life somehow. It will make you a better man, husband, father somehow. And that's what I want, I want to talk about today is the power of focus and literally what you focus on grows. So one of the three pillars of one of the three pillars of strength in the strong first system is dominata. Okay, dominanta. And which means the dominant thought. Okay, Dr. Uh, Jeffrey Schwartz in his book, um, the name is uh, escaping me. You are not your brain. He refers to it as the quantum Zeno effect, right? Two, the same concept, but just named two different ways. And so inside, inside his book, he references Hebb's law, which states neurons that w fire together, wire together. And so in the book, they share several case studies of their patients that have, you know, some have drinking problems, some have many different challenge many different challenges they're trying to figure out well, what creates these ha these these habits you know based on you know this the stories that they're telling themselves right then they begin to have emotional sensations and then based on these emotional sensations they have these unhealthy habits that kick in and so they're trying to better and they were doing all these studies to figure that out and one and a couple of them comes down to Hebb's law, which is what f fires together, wires together, right? So these neurons that be we begin to have, I mean, these these excitations that we begin to have. And as I started looking at it, I was like, you know what? That sounds like grease the groove, right? It's the, that the consistent application of tension, right? Or the excitation, i.e. firing, um, w wires neural pathways together. Right, so if you're not familiar with grease the groove, Pavel uh, created this concept called grease the groove, where you're just you're creating these small excitations throughout the day. Let's say pressing a kettlebell, and you're going to press a kettlebell like three times or so, several times throughout the daytime. Right, like so. Let's say you keep a kettlebell in your kitchen, and every time you walk past the kitchen, you got to do five presses per side or something like that. But what happens is you you get in a lot of reps and sets, but without the fatigue. So you're constantly firing and wiring specific pathways together, right? Which is how you get really good at, at pressing without having to press with all this volume at one time. 
And then they reference the quantum Zeno effect, which is the focus, right? So this is where dominantic comes in. Not so much, so focusing on, don't focus on the weight you have to lift, but focusing more on the muscles that need to be activated, right? Focusing on your breath, focusing on your setup, like specific, focusing on specific things versus just focusing on the weight, right? And so I just wrapped up a couple of books in one of which I just finished reading right now before I decided to jump on and make this audio for you. And it kind of, it kind of ties into all of this. And I thought it was pretty interesting and I want to uh, share it with you. <clears throat> so the book that I just finished reading is called Victory Favors the Fearless. How to Defeat the Seven Fears That Hold You Back. And so the book's about this boxer uh, with this guy that has aspirations of becoming a pro boxer and eventually becoming the world heavyweight champion. But he keeps struggling around these seven fears. And so his coach starts teaching him how to overcome these fears. And towards the end of the book, um, he was talking about belief systems and he was talking about focus. And I just thought it was relevant uh, for today. And what it has to mean, what it has to do with this whole like uh, quantum Zeno effect and dominanta and like how it all ties in here. So, Remember, what you focus on grows. And this is this goes across pretty much everything in life. Your relationships, your strength training, um, your health, like you name it. Okay, you can apply this to anything. Okay, your business, you name it. So I'm just going to read a little bit here from the book. He says, um, the beliefs you have and the things you choose to focus on Create the environment you're most likely to experience. It all comes back to what you're choosing to focus on. Your focus is your aim. Whatever you aim for, you're more likely to hit. And even if you don't hit the bullseye, you'll still end up close to it. Let's look at how focus affects pain. As a fighter, you know all about pain. Whether it's the pain you feel in your legs during a hard run or the pain you feel after a world-class heavyweight slams his fist into your face, you get to choose what you focus on in those moments. Focus on the pain and you'll feel more pain. Focus on how tired you are and how much everything hurts and you'll feel weaker. Your focus will amplify the pain. And I can tell you what, this is totally true. Because, I, I don't know, you probably saw me collapse, fall on the floor there a, a few minutes ago. Um, I think I got lightheaded or something. Um, I think I was holding too much tension up in my face. But, um, man, today, I wasn't feeling it today, man. Um, like, my body is just really, really tired. I'm just crazy sore. Um, I don't know if it was innate or what, but I just, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on the lifts I need to make. I'm going to focus on my setup. I'm going to focus on how I grip the bar. I'm not going to focus on the soreness um, because I knew that if I just, if I continue to focus on that, like the session just, I I wasn't going to be able to finish. And this was a pretty tough second cycle of training. So I'm already seven days in, right? So remember how I mentioned, I'm going to do three days in a row, then a technical day, three days in a row, then a technical day, like a recovery day. Right? This is day seven at the end of the second cycle. And dude, I'm freaking beat up. Crazy sore. My whole upper back, my hips, my glutes are just crazy sore. And so coming in, I just like was not feeling it. And, but something just told me, you know what, don't focus on that. Focus on everything else that needs to happen and you'll hit every one of these lifts. And so anyway, I just read this this morning. I was like, you know, I think this is a good message to to get out to you guys. He goes on to say in the book, um, it's in those moments when you have to teach yourself not to focus on the pain, but to instead focus on the desired result or the positive consequence of the pain focus on moving forward despite the pain and the pain lessens focus on fighting through the pain and the pain dissipates focus on the strength that comes from pain 
and the pain gives way to feelings of strength. What you focus on determines what you experience. Focus on the pain and you'll experience more pain. Focus on bad things and you'll notice all kinds of bad things around you. Focus on your weaknesses and you'll feel weaker. Focus on making excuses and you'll find excuses to make. Focus on your fears and they'll only get stronger. If someone believes they're due for a setback, what's their focus? The setback. Right. So what you focus on grows, man. I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know where you're at in this journey. But if if you're if you're going through a challenge, if you're going through a hurdle or something like that, if you continue to focus on that exact thing, you're only going to get more of that thing, right? Because ultimately, you get to choose what you focus on, right? We can't control the thoughts that come into our head. Like our brain is always gathering information. It's always gathering information from the world around us, right? But we get to choose what meaning we give to those thoughts that are coming in, right? We get to, we can either continue to focus on the negative or we can focus on the positive, focus on the positive outcome that we want to get, right? Like the, like the, like the author says, the focus on the positive consequence or the, the, the desired result that we want. And for me, the, desire, the, the desired result that I want now that I'm getting back on the barbell deadlift is to hit that, to get that 320 kilo deadlift. So I tried not to focus on the pain. I tried not to focus on the soreness in today's session. Instead, I focused on everything that needed to happen to get to, to get today's session done. So what you focus on grows. If you want more good things to happen in your life, focus on that. That's all I got today, man. Appreciate you listening, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.